What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Forge. I'm Vulcan and today we're talking about Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen. So this is one of those games that kind of cropped up around the same time as Project Gorgon, Shot of the Avatar, just a kind of a hail back to the old school RPG, the, the good old days. You know, you got the veterans of the industry that are talking about how RPGs are too easy and they're too casual and the shit should be hard and if you die it should be just, just hardcore. Awesome, great. So Pantheon kind of falls into that category as your old school, quote, old school RPG. Now, here's the deal. This one, by far, has been much more secretive than the others. Um, we'll get into that in a moment and their kind of strategy for that. So there are streams, they do do streams, they do gameplay things, they do all that stuff. Um, but you cannot play the game today unless you have some sort of deal worked out with a developer or you're somebody on the dev team, obviously, itself. Um, so don't expect to go out here and buy one of these here pledges and get to play the game. But like I said, we'll jump into that here in a moment. Let's talk about Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen. How does it stack up to Shroud of the Avatar? How does it stack up to Project Gorgon? And is this thing even worth keeping on your radar? All right, so dropping down, we're going to hit the lore first. Now, the lore is very Dungeons and Dragon y, all right? You got. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen takes place in a high fantasy world of Terminus. It's very diverse, right? You have different cultures, different realms, different time periods, different civilizations, different deities. Um, just a very typical, well-rounded uh, fantasy world, right? Um, so nothing really standing out as out of the ordinary, okay? Um, as we sift through this, right, their people and cultures vie for power, form alliances, struggling to gain a foothold. So it's not really anything that I would consider, wow, this is a vastly different lore, vastly different story than I've heard before. But let's take a look at the world, all right? So let's view the Atlas of Terminus. So the actual world of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is here, right? You have King's Reach to the east, and you have Rainfall to the west and you got the valley of the watchmen the burning sanctum some real spooky spooky dead vault stuff up here you have some called tazarin's gaze so i'm liking the look of the world itself i really like the way this is all set up you can tell there's like capital cities here i'm assuming there's no legend but this is what i'm assuming unless those are like world bosses or something i don't know but it looks like maybe these are kingdoms right this is the kingdom where the water people live the kingdom of the forest people in the broken mall i don't know um but i like the world the way everything's kind of set up looking good you have future development up here so if they ever do x packs you could open this up as a the frozen north type of deal you could, like got some continents down here that are kind of off screen as well as over here so there is potential for growth so Let's go back and let's take a look at the actual races. So the races of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. You have the Archai, right? Bred as the ultimate of slaves, the diverse and vigorous Archai manifest their freedom and celebration in battle. You have the Dwarves, standard issue there. Um, he looks a lot more hardcore than your typical Dwarf. You have the Dark Mirror, which look sort of like a Naga, but not a Naga. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, they're a water type of water elf, which is kind of cool. Um, they're probably the ones that live near the waterfall area. That's probably their kingdom. Ha, got it. Uh, ogres, standard issue ogres. They got bones and shit. They got the teeth. They got the, the stuff. They look more like orcs from World of Warcraft, except they have regular, uh, you know, colored human skin, not green skin or purple skin. So that's cool. You got humans, standard issue. Um... Always with the typical, since the dawn of Throne past five centuries ago, humans have stood at the pinnacle of influence. Every single high fantasy game. Humans are at the pinnacle of influence. They're the first ones to fall. They've enslaved everything else. Like, it's just such a typical cliche for the human race. Halflings, okay. Fairly straightforward. Definitely not a hobbit. Um, and definitely not like a gnome. So there's a little something going on here. Um, pretty cool. Uh, the exuberance of the halflings masks an ancient curse. Exciting times. Uh, we're also looking at the elves. So your standard issue elves. Um, pale skin. Um, so they're mourning and flourishing under the council rule of Fair than Fair and Fair Thale. Oof. Yeah, and the brilliance of the Lucent Tree. Gnomes. Look at these things. So as I was flipping through this, 
Gnomes look dope. Like that looks like a ethereal from World of Warcraft or like a banshee or something from some sort of other game. That is not a gnome to me. That is a hardcore looking like creature of death and doom and magic and mystery. So I really like this take on gnomes. Um, curious to see what they do with it, but we'll see. And then you have the scar. Um, they're, I mean, holy hell, look at it. Like that's whatever. Um, that's a thing. So they look to be pretty intense um, and they look to be more like your typical orc. Um, they look very like war torn, right? And it says right here, appetite for carnage. So if you're gonna be like a warrior or rogue, this is probably gonna be your thing. Speaking of, let's flip down to classes, kids. So we got Cleric, Paladin, Warrior, Rogue, Ranger, Dire Lord, Monk, Summoner, Enchanter, Shaman, Druid, Wizard. So let's go ahead and flip through these. We're not going to get too deep into them, but we're going to take a look at the total kind of little synopsis, right? So in the Frail Age, communion with the Celestials is unheard of. The Cleric must bind to ancient tomes containing the last vestiges of light from when the Celestials had drawn near. Okay, pretty cool. Paladin, once a cleric, the paladin has a call transcending the customs of the cleric order. Led by her conviction, she sets off to carry her own righteous judgment. Pretty paladin-y. Warrior, the warrior seemingly defies limits of physical strength, ability, and resilience. However, not content with the fortitude alone, he refines. He also refines his mind, becoming a master strategist in battle. Rogue, the treacherous rogue, is far more than a trickster. With her dagger, she is a ruinous force that smiles at dark places and unravels her enemies with terrifying efficiency. Ranger, in the untamed regions, the ranger is a versatile and ferocious warrior, united with land and animals he communes with. Dire Lord, so this one's kind of interesting. Dire Lord's a, a unique thing when I was reading it. So legends speak of Dire Lord's capable of mastering the crippling power of fear with some able to manipulate the essence of living things, even their very blood. That came across as kind of like a warlock. There's some gameplay I'm going to throw up for you guys. It's Dire Lord gameplay. And that's essentially kind of what it is. It's like a warlock with a two-hander. So imagine like a, I guess, a corrupted warrior that uses dark magic. I don't know. Monk. Through, through long-standing discipline and unwavering obedience to ancient teachings, the monk wields their mind and body as a devastating holistic weapon against their enemies. Standard issue. Summoner. Summoners developed a powerful arcane command to conjure sustenance, tools, barricades, weaponry, even fantastic creatures of incredible strength. All at their whim. Enchanter. Through a single word, the enchanter can turn the intent of an enemy and break even the strongest of wills into submission. Sounds like a conjurist. Uh, pretty cool, shaman. So it is rumored that shaman live in every age at once. Interesting. Thus, shamans know the ancest ancestry of any friend or foe, wielding the knowledge of great benefit or baneful cost. So, not necessarily a nature-oriented thing, but more of an ancestry type thing. That's kind of cool. Uh, druid, amidst the fragmented realms, the wild-eyed druid, wild-eyed, uh, embraces the diverse and natural world, peering into its mysteries. Druids are revered as visionaries who can see into the heart of Terminus. And your wizards. While many wizards are driven mad through the study of arcane, those who emerge stable under the weight of this power wield a force barely imaginable in awe and effect. So those are your classes. So a lot of them are your typical RPG classes, right? There's nothing really um, that jumped out at me. These are just very standard, right? Dire Lord jumped out at me. Enchanter's pretty neat, and Summoner is pretty typical depending on how they kind of run with it. But the Enchanter and the Dire Lord kind of jumped off the page, I guess, a little bit. So, news. Um, we're getting schooled this, the Scar Rays redesign, so type stuff. So here's some news you can run run through and jump in there. Visionary Realms. Um, and by the way, they're rehiring, so we should start to see this uh, project pick up a little bit. It's been in development for quite a few years, and they got a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of seed, um, seed investing and things like that. So they have a lot of money that they're going to be throwing towards the game. Thank goodness. But um, we're going to be jumping into the pledges real quick. So, like I was talking about pledges, why can't I just buy this pledge just like every other thing for Kickstarter and just play the game? It's expensive. The most basic pledge is fifty dollars. The top one and just the supporter pledge is 150 bucks. Champion is 250 to 500. Um, VIP is a thousand plus. If you want forum access, free to $15 a month. If you want to upgrade, you can. Other pledges such as beyond the thousand dollar pledge or to invest, you can do that as well. 
So if we jump down through the summoner pledges right for 50 bucks, you get supporter access, a digital copy of the game, name reservation, and Pantheon Explorer. For 150 scoots, you get the entire thing, right? You get so you get the Ring of the Fallen, some vanity pets, some tunics, things like that, additional character slot, beta access, two copies of the game, because just in case you want to use one as a coaster, I guess. But so there's that. Champion pledges get a little more intense. There's a lot more stuff that comes with it, including a cloth map, some postcards from the team, stuff like that, little keepsakes. Um, real loot, apparently, is how they're going for it. VIP pledges ten thousand dollars let that sink in ten thousand dollars that's so much money on a game you can't play yet so we got alpha access beta access name reservation two copies of the game character slots you got everything else above it right you got a lifetime game subscription um, which is exclusive apparently to this ten thousand dollar pledge and by the way uh yeah this game will be a subscription game um you also have a tester credit, in-game credits, stuff like that. And then you get to design a dungeon or raid with a design team. So that's pretty cool. So you get to be a lot more involved in the whole design process. This is for people with just money to burn. And you're just able just to honestly go out, do whatever you want to do. And money's not a problem for you. So let's go ahead and let's jump down to some screenshots here. So jumping into the screenshots, um, there isn't much, right? It's just very straightforward. Here's some pictures of the world. Here's some of this. Here's some of that. Um, here's like a swamp type thing. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at some gameplay. Now, this is a Dire Lord, all right? So the Dire Lord, if you guys remember, is like a warlock warrior combination that you typically tank. They have a lot of healing, self-healing type abilities, sort of like a death knight, if you will. Now, in this video, which big shout out to Co Carnage, the guy in the bottom left-hand corner. I don't know if he's a developer, if he's just a streamer or what he is, but he's been uploading content like crazy for this game. So big shout out to you, Co. That's right, baby. Woo -woo, let's do it. Okay, so... They're taking down this Black Rose Astrologer. Now, this is the last boss in their little dungeon run they went on here. And um, as you can see, this is a classic MMO, guys. This is classic truly through and through, all right? And because of that, it's taking a little bit longer to kill the boss. The boss doesn't have a ton of mechanics. It's taking a little bit longer. You have to use stuns. You have to plan ahead. You have to fully utilize your character. Classic RPGs, that's why I love them. You have to know your character inside and out. If you were to go fight this Black Rose Astrologer and not know anything about the Dire Lord, um, you might be able to get through it, but you would not get through it well. Now, if you look in the back right, you see the guy with the... Uh, or in the back left, sorry. You see the guy with the blue hammer. He's the healer. And he made mention that Dire Lords are a blast to heal because of their spike damage and how they can bounce back and their health bar kind of bounces all over the place. He said, and I quote... It's much more fun to heal Dire Lords because um, that, of that spike damage. It's, you know, fun for healers, right? Um, warriors right now, I guess their health bars move like molasses, so they can take a ton of ton of uh, damage, and they're just, you know, all around a less spiky tank, more smooth healing experience. But you get less of the, uh, the big oh shit moments. So that was the last boss. As you can see, like I mentioned before, guys, it is not flashy it is not something that is all over the place not a ton of mechanics but this is still pre-alpha so we're still dealing with quite a few different things and we're still dealing with uh, less of the flashy effects we're still dealing with really a very rough model of what is to come hopefully in the next couple of years so uh, let me know what you guys think drop comments below um, how does this you know, line up with Project Gorgon? How's it line up with Shroud of the Avatar? I'm curious to know what you guys have to say. And is this a game that you guys are going to be following or not following? Let me know. This has been Vulcan, guys. Adios.